my friends and fellow mono game developers. My name is Chris Whitley, also known as Air Turtle Dev in the mono game community. And today we're going to be doing a video on collision detection in mono game. I would like to first start by thanking all of my supporters on Patreon who have graciously supported me in making these tutorials and videos for everyone. More info at the end of this video uh, if you would like to find out how you can also support this channel. Uh, so moving on from that, uh, this video is being made because of a question someone asked on my previous video. Uh, their name is Kadir. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And they ask, how exactly is the collision detection or a collision system in mono game? Will you make a video about it? Thanks for a video. So unfortunately, Kadir, the answer is mono game does not have a collision detection system. But fortunately, that's kind of the beauty of mono game, right? If you need to detect collision between two objects, in your game, if they're colliding, you can just write a really quick calculation to say, yes, they're colliding, no, they're not. Or if you would like to do like a full physics uh, engine simulation to determine if objects are colliding, you can do that as well. You can use third-party libraries that offer physics simulations, such as Box2D, Farseer, Velcro. Uh, one of our community members, NCAS, maintains a library called Aether Physics, uh, which I believe is a fork of Farseer. Might have that wrong. If I have that wrong, I apologize, NCAS. Uh, but I will leave a link to Aether Physics below in the description of this video. So if you need a full physics engine for calculating collision detection is something complex, there are options available. However, it doesn't have to be complex. It can just be something super simple as is one object colliding with another one. So with that intro out of the way, uh, let's, let's get started on what we're going to talk about in this video today. Specifically, we're going to be discussing what is called Axis Align Bounding Box or AABB for short. Axis Align Bounding Box is a really simple calculation that you can make to determine if two rectangles are colliding. Because it's called Axis Align Bounding Box, if you have two rectangles, their axes do have to be aligned. So with these two rectangles here, we could use AABB because the x-axis of both of these and the y-axis of both of these rectangles are aligned. However, if you have rectangles where one is like this, and another one like this, we cannot use axis aligned bounding box here. We would have to use something else such as separating axon theorem, uh, which would be for a completely separate video. So for in this video, it's not for these type of collisions here. It is for two rectangles that have their axes aligned. So how exactly does axis aligned bounding box work? How does it detect two rectangles are colliding? To figure that out, we're going to have to define some properties about a rectangle. So first we know that a rectangle has four sides to it or four edges. It has a top edge, a bottom edge, a right edge, and a left edge. All rectangles are going to have this. So we can use that information about each rectangle to calculate whether two rectangles are colliding. So let's draw an example of two rectangles that are colliding so we can visually see this is going to look like. We'll call this rectangle A, and this one will be rectangle B. So in this visually, we can see both of these rectangles are colliding, but how can we prove mathematically that they are colliding based off of the information we have, which is going to be the top bottom, left, and right edge of each of the rectangles. Well, thankfully, it's actually kind of easy to, to figure out, and you can maybe see it visually, but if not, maybe it'll make more, a little bit more sense in, in math. But the way, the way we figure this out is we have to do four checks. We have to do four checks because a rectangle has four edges. And the checks that we need to make are, is the right side of rectangle A, is it greater than the left side of rectangle B. So is this edge here further along the x-axis than this edge here? The next check we need to make is if the left edge of rectangle A is less than the right edge of rectangle B. So is this edge here less than on the x-axis than the right edge of rectangle B. Next, we need to check if the uh, top edge of rectangle A 
is less than the bottom edge of rect rectangle B. And so that, that might seem a little confusing because we would normally think that the top edge here is greater than the bottom edge here because it's, it's higher up visually. But you have to remember in graphics and in mono game, the top left corner is zero, zero, and X is positive this way. Uh, X is positive that way, and Y is positive down. So that would mean at this point here, this would be a lower point on the Y axis than this point here for B. And the final check we need to make again um, for the, the last edge is gonna be if the bottom edge of B, or sorry, if the bottom edge of rectangle A is greater than the top edge of rectangle B. So is this here greater than on the Y axis than this here? If all of these, equate to true. This is true. This is true. This is true. And this is true. If all of these are true, then we can confidently say, yes, those rectangles are colliding. If even a single one of those is false, then it's not colliding. All it takes is one and it's no longer colliding. And that is what axis align downing bot describes. How can we implement this in our game in order to detect two rectangles colliding in our game? So let's let's head on over into Visual Studio and do it in there. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. I just have a brand new monogame desktop GL project created uh, that I've set up a few things in it so we don't have to spend time uh, making a 30 minute video writing code for things that aren't related to this. Um, but essentially what I have here are two rectangles, rectangle A, rectangle B, and I initialize both of them uh, with a width and height of 100 both. And rectangle A is at 1010, rectangle B is at 210. Um, then I have this pixel texture 2D that I'm creating in the load content method, which is just a one by one pixel uh, with white color. Uh, then we draw the pixels uh, add the, the rectangle A and rectangle B destination rectangles. Um, and I also have some input detection in here just to determine if keys are pressed and we can move one of the rectangles around to determine if uh, the two rectangles are colliding. So let's run this example as it is right now, just to see what's going on here. We see we have two rectangles and if I move that rectangle over, obviously they're colliding now, but we don't have anything in there to actually detect that they're colliding. Nothing's, nothing's detecting that right now. So let's implement that based off of the axis line bounding box definition that we just defined previously. So to do that, let's uh, create a value. Private bool is colliding. And in here is where we're gonna store per frame if the two are actually colliding. So now we need a method to determine are, are they colliding. So we'll create a new method. Uh, public I'm going to return a boolean value uh, is colliding and to determine we're going to have to give it two rectangles so rectangle a rectangle b and in here we just need to implement what we defined previously in the axis align bounding box right here so all four of these checks here we need to implement all four of those to ensure that if all those return true then we can say successfully that it is colliding. So let's go down the list and, and implement those. So the first one is if the right edge of A is greater than the left edge of B. So we'll do return uh, the right edge of A is greater than the left edge of B. And the left edge of A is less than the right edge of B. So A left is less than the right. And the top edge of A is less than the bottom edge of B. So A top is less than B bottom. And for the final one, the bottom edge of A is greater than the top edge of B. So A bottom is greater than B top. So as long as all of those return are all, I'm sorry, as long as all of those evaluate as true and it returns true, then it's colliding. If any one of those evaluates as false, it's going to return false to say that it's not colliding. 
So where would we actually check for this at? Uh, the best place to do that would be after movement has occurred. So after we've done the movement calculations, we'll say is colliding equals call our method is colliding and we'll give it rectangle A and rectangle B. Now that's just gonna set the flag is colliding true or false. We need to visually see that that's changing. So let's come down to rectangle A since that's the one we're actually moving. And in here for the color of rectangle A, we'll say uh, is colliding. We use turning area operator. So we'll say is colliding. Uh, if that's true, then we'll do color.red. And if that's false, we'll do color.white. And let's run that real quick. There's our two rectangles. We can move A around. Right now, A is not colliding, so the color is white. And the moment it collides with B, you can see it changes color. So right there, we've detected we've detected collision using the axis align bounding box calculations. And we can move this all throughout. We continue detecting. We can check around every nook and cranny, every edge, to ensure that this is working for both bop, uh, top, bottom, left, and right edges. As you can see, it's, it is working. So this is how you would implement axis align bounding box uh, collision detection in mono game. Um, I know there's a lot of you probably in the comments already yelling at me, telling me, why did we just implement AABB when mono game already has it built in? And it's true. Mono game does have this already built in, or, or at least the axis align bounding box calculation is already built in. I did feel a bit necessary to explain the math behind it so you would understand what it's doing uh, instead of just saying, hey, just use this method, right? Uh, so now that you can maybe understand what it's doing, let's actually simplify this a little bit to determine if they're colliding. So we can actually remove our is colliding code that we wrote here. And what we can do is when we get our value here, we can say, Rectangle A uh, intersects rectangle B. And if we take a look at this intersects method, go to definition. Okay, and so in here, we can actually see what the intersect method is doing is it's taking, it's checking if the value of which would be B that we pass in here, if B left is less than the right of the original rectangle, if the left edge of the original rectangle is less than right, if the top of B is less than the bottom, and if the top of A is less than the bottom of B, it's gonna return true. Otherwise, it's gonna return false. So this method itself is just doing the same AABB calculation that we just manually implemented. So it is, this piece here is built into modern game, and we can run this example uh, just to kind of show that it's doing the same thing. So if we move this over, there we go, it detects the intersection. So that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, that's how you can do really simple collision detection with two rectangles in mono game. Um, you can write out the axis align bounding box calculations yourself, which we did before, or you can just use the intersect method. Uh, that's part of the rectangle stroke in mono game. Um, but hopefully by explaining the what axis align bounding box is before and going through the math of it and the proof of it, uh, will help you better understand what exactly that rectangle uh, intersects method down here is actually doing for you in the game. So uh, that's it for this. Uh, this is for rectangle collision. Uh, I will do follow-up videos on doing circle collisions as well as uh, rectangle and circle and more complex collisions with ingons using what's called separating, ax ax separating axis theorem uh, or SAT. Uh, in the meantime, before I put those videos out, feel free to research those topics and look it up yourself. Um, but that's all I have for now. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, and if you would like to support me in making these tutorials and videos, there is a link in the description of this video for my Patreon. Uh, if you would like to consider supporting me monthly with whatever amount you would like. Uh, there's also a link at the, in the description for the Monogame Discord. If you would like to join us in the Monogame Discord, come by. We're all fantastic people. I think we're fantastic people. Uh, we're always helpful. If you have any questions, you can ask questions about Monogame. If you have questions about programming, you can ask that as well. 
Uh, if we can answer any of your questions, we will. If we don't know the answer to your question, hopefully we can point you in the right direction to get the answer that you want. So with that, I hope you are having a good day, a good evening, a good night, or a good morning. And this is Chris Whitley, also known as Air Turtle in the modeling community, and I'm out. Take care.